exactly what it is. Give me a second. It's a Dell Latitude. I think it's an E60. 6450 i don't know it's not written on the top for these ones but uh yeah it's quite a nice laptop as you can see um it's really clean for the age it is a, it was on windows 7 we're going to upgrade that to windows 11 today with the bypass uh, it's got an i5 second gen and eight gigabytes of ram also an ssd nice feature of this as well i do need to um get some more screws so it's, I, people don't do this by accident but it's got hot swappable SSD. So as you can see, the SSD slides in it with that side sl slot, which is very nice for someone like me, but most people, it's not really that useful. So um, yeah, we're gonna get this set up today and um, I'll take you guys through the... So we're gonna use this eight gigabyte USB stick to put a Windows 11 boot image on. This was given to me by a friend many, many years ago and it's still working and it's what I use to do all my installs. Uh, I do swap between 10 and 11 quite a lot, so it does get flashed quite a lot between 10 and 11. But it's good because it keeps the image up to date, especially when I'm going out to clients and doing it uh, remotely. It does help quite a lot. So we've plugged the USB in. As you can see, it's already got an image on. We're going to format that. Um, and then when we go to format, we're just going to restore device defaults and do a quick format and start and press OK. That takes a couple of seconds normally. Taking its time today. There we go. So format complete. Then we're going to go down to Chrome and we're going to go down to Windows 11. Uh, media creation tool. Uh, download Windows 11. So we're going to scroll down to uh, download Windows 11 disk image ISO and Windows 11 multi edition ISO. We're going to select and then we're going to click download. It'll validate my request. Hopefully download it. <laughs> Product language. Oh, sorry, I didn't notice that. English, uh, English, United Kingdom. I'll just put international for now and select it when I get to that point. Uh, validating request. Okay. Oh, this is it, sorry. Uh, so I'm gonna download that now. I'm gonna put that in my downloads and press save. Uh, there we go. So you can do a media creation tool, but I've noticed a lot of times it automatically selects home, even if you don't want it to be. So I'm going to use this. Um, I'll show you in a second what I'm going to do when this downloads. I'm going to download this. It's about a six gig image, but uh, if I go to Rufus, I'll be able to um, select a, uh, what's it called? I've lost my trailer for it. <laughs> We're going to select a, uh, on Rufus, we're going to select the ISO and build a, um, basically build a boot USB um, same sort of thing as media creation tool would do, but it allows you to select the ISOs when you go to install it on the computer, which is a lot better way of doing it. And then we've got Rufus open. It's automatically detected the uh, USB. Uh, you want to leave that on what it is and press select. We're going to select the Windows 11 image and press open. Uh, it'll automatically change a lot of things. You can tell it to do certain things. Uh, however, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to leave that as it is and we're going to press start um i'm not going to give it a local thing i'm the remove requirement for yeah we can do that and we can remove the requirement for tpm which is what we want because this pc isn't normally compatible with windows 11 but um it is really because windows 10 and windows 11 don't differ too much it just wants it to be more secure pretty much um and we can remove that requirement with rufus yeah all media will be destroyed and there we go so that normally takes it does take a while sometimes. It completely depends on what USB you're using and stuff. But I use this USB because it's USB 2.0, so it has the best compatibility with older devices, newer devices, and all that. It might take a little bit longer to, you know, do this, basically. But at the end of the day, it, it's a lot better for me because it, it's more compatible. So I'll we'll jump to the bit where it's done. So the USB is now done. I've put it into the side. As you can see, it is, this PC is a little bit dusty. I did clean it yesterday, but I got dusty again already. So anyway, we're going to turn the PC on and we're going to press F12 and that should boot us into the BIOS. Well, it gives you boot options, but for Dell, I find it a lot easier to do it this way. It's probably not the right way, but... 
So our boot options, we want to boot into our UEFI. Actually, we need to check our BIOS setup first because this being an older Windows 7 laptop, it may still be in legacy mode. So we're gonna go into the BIOS setup. We've got system information that shows you what it's got. But uh, our battery is normal, it's charging, which is brilliant. Yep, it's still in legacy mode. So if you see that boot list legacy, we need to change that. So we're gonna change that to UEFI because we are installing Windows 11 and it won't work otherwise. And we're gonna press apply, that's done. And we have to system configuration as well. We need to, oh no, it's not in there. It's a different, different BIOS. Uh, video, no security, no, it's somewhere else, isn't it? We are looking for, um, I might, I actually might be in there. We're looking for um, secure boot, <laughs> if it has it, because uh, some some PCs do and some don't. So security, system passwords, strong passwords, TPM. It's got TPM anyway. Um, if it's got that, it should have. Or is it in? Sometimes it's in boot. No, it's not in boot sequence, is it? Ah, uh, where is that? So system configuration. Not in there either. Hmm. Post behavior. No, we're good. Fast boot is for mm, Okay. Virtualization. Oh, I don't think it has secure boot then. So if it doesn't have secure boot, that's fine. That's surprising, but it hasn't got it. So we won't enable that for now because we can't. And we're going to press exit. Then we're going to go F12 again because we need to get back into that menu that we did ha have previously. So let me just wait for that to load. Deciding if it wants to load. It will come back on, there we go. So we're pressing F12, preparing the boot menu. Now we want to go into UEFI in USB because that's our USB stick. We're going to press enter. And here we go, we're going to go into it and this is booting Windows 11. So now we're going to go through the Windows 11 setup. I won't bore you with all of this because it's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, you go in, if you've got an SSD with something on, obviously delete all the partitions. Um, and then it's pretty much just pressing next. Make sure you install Windows 11 Pro or Enterprise, because if you install Home, you won't be able to add a printer to this. Just keep that in mind. But yeah, I will join you guys when we're on the Windows 11 